Hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to another episode of High Intensity Intensity Inspiration Inspiration Training. Training. Whoa, okay, I'm just putting the finishing touches on a painting of my childhood home, but I get that you might not recognize this as a house right away. Uh, no. That's because I'm using more of an abstract approach to paint my childhood home, meaning I'm not trying to depict an actual realistic house, but rather I'm using my feelings and my emotions to come through my paintbrush in order to use color, form, and marks to represent my childhood home. What I love so much about abstraction is the unexpected results that manifest when you're not trying to draw or paint something exactly how it is. That's why in this episode, I'll be leading you through three creative exercises that will push you to filter your emotions, your feelings, and your intuition through pieces of abstract art. And as always, we'll be creating at the The speed speed of one. one. Which means that you're gonna be acting very quick, very fast before your brain can get in the way. For exercises today, we're gonna kick things off with a bilateral drawing exercise. We're then going to create abstract art using a set of dice and a variety of art supplies and mediums. And lastly, we'll don our chef's hat to deconstruct our favorite meal into a work of abstract art. All right, so let's get started. Um. Our first exercise today is bilateral drawing. That's drawing with both of your hands simultaneously. I love this exercise because of its therapeutic and meditative qualities. It helps facilitate a conversation between the left side of your brain, being the analytical side, and the right side of your brain, being the creative side. This exercise creates a soothing effect that helps slow down your breathing and connects you to the present. So when I'm feeling stressed or overwhelmed, this exercise really helps me soothe both my mind and my body, and I hope it helps you too. For this exercise, the materials I have are a stack of paper, I'll be drawing with pastels today, but you can use whatever tool you'd like. And then I also have some vibe setting tools so we can create a mindful, calm environment. So for this exercise, we're gonna be drawing with both hands simultaneously. Doesn't have to be symmetrical. You can just follow your brain and see what happens. We're gonna have 60 seconds on the clock. Now that does not mean you need to speed through this exercise and do as many drawings as possible on different sheets of paper. You can do one, two, three, whatever your heart desires because we're following the intuition of our brains. Before we get started, we're gonna set the mood in here. Let's get 60 seconds on the clock in three, two, one, let's go. I'm gonna start by grabbing a blue color and a pink color for each of my hands and we're just drawing in unison. This feels very satisfying for my brain, feeling very mindful. I'm feeling at ease and one with myself. And here I'm just connecting with whatever my intuition wants to do, which is loops apparently. Let's move on to another piece of paper. Sorry for being loud. For my second drawing, I will be picking colors intuitively. Ah yes, green and purple. That feels great. Feels good to make an intentional mess without anything in mind. That's the power of abstraction. My left brain and my right brain are coming together. And that is time. Now what I found here is that it feels extremely soothing to have my left and my right brain coming together as one. I feel calm, I feel mindful, I feel at peace with my own thoughts, and it's nice just to let your brain be its brain and create intuitively. I hope you're now calm and at peace with the power of abstraction and ready for our next exercises. For this exercise, we're gonna be playing a game. Woohoo! I love games. All right, now this game involves three die that color correspond with the tools you'll be using, the marks you'll be making, and the colors you'll be using to create a -a one-of-a-kind piece of abstract art. Now what I love about this game is that dies create parameters. So if you struggle with knowing where to start with an abstract composition, this will be great for you because you'll know exactly what you need to do. But your own artistic voice and personality will shine through because they will enable you to create an abstract composition that nobody else could. Now, if you're following along at home, you can definitely make your own list of parameters based on whatever you have lying around, or you're welcome to follow along with my dice rolls. 
Now for the materials I have, I'm using exactly what's on this list. We have a Q-tip, a toothbrush, some sponges, a stick I found on the street, some corks, and a plain old paintbrush. And for my colors, I have a selection of paints, which include watercolor, acrylic, and some ink for the black. Now for the marks I have listed here, dots, squiggles, zigzags, dashes, splatter, and crosshatch. So each time I roll the set of dice, it's gonna determine exactly what I'm making on the paper. So remember, we're leaning into the speed of one. We're gonna make things fast, we're gonna roll the die, and whatever ends up on the paper is based on your own intuition. Let's get 90 seconds on the clock. In three, two, one, let's roll those die. Here we go. Okay, we've got toothbrush, dots, and red. So here we have some acrylic paint with the toothbrush. We're just gonna make dots, 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 more dots. I'm gonna roll again here. Purple Q-tip dashes, dash, 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 dash. Orange cork squiggles. I love squiggles. Oh, that's very satisfying with watercolor. Sponge, yeah. Splatter and orange. Splatter, splatter. Oh, one more splatter. Blue paintbrush zigzags. All right, zig, zag, zig, zag. Yes, yes. Okay, stick dots red. Here we go, we're gonna do watercolor. How does a watercolor interact with stick? It interacts well. Black Q-tip crosshatch, let's go. I am really into this. Okay, let's roll the die again. Green toothbrush splatter. Whoa, <laughs> this is very fun. Nice texture. I love it! We have 10 seconds to go. This is the last roll of the dice. Sponge dots red. Here we go. Big old globs here. Big globs. Yes, dot, dot. Yeah, we're almost out of time. Here we go. And time. This is fantastic. I loved this exercise because the parameters let me know exactly what I needed to do, but it was up to my own intuition to know where to place everything. So the result is actually something that I would not have created on my own if I didn't have those parameters in place. What I love the most about this is the contrast between the black crosshatches and the bright colors and the splatters. It really creates texture and movement that I wasn't expecting and I'm really enjoying. And what I really loved about this exercise was I was able to shut off my brain and lean into the randomness of the dice. This one is going on my fridge. Hey, for our final exercise today, we're gonna be playing with our food by making abstract food art. Now, I love this exercise because it allows us to let go and have fun with everyday objects. And playing with your food is kind of frowned upon, but when we're acting at the, the speed, speed of fun, fun, we don't care about getting sticky fingers and doing things a little bit weird and wrong. We just wanna have fun and make some abstract art. So I'll be having hot dogs for lunch today, and I've gathered all of the accessories, the condiments, the side items for my hot dog lunch today so that I can create a piece of abstract art with all of these materials. And I challenge you to do the same thing with whatever your favorite lunchtime food is. Grab the side items, grab the condiments, grab the accoutrement for your lunch, and get ready to use those as materials for creating some abstract art before we eat. Yum. And Remember, don't get in your own way here. Lean into the power of abstraction. Lean into the intuition and let your brain create what it wants to in the given moment at the, the speed of one. Are you ready? Yes, chef. Okay, let's get 60 seconds on the clock. In three, two, one, let's go. I'm gonna start with the condiment base layer so we can get some color and movement in the design. Oh, I love how that looks. And then we're gonna grab some brown mustard. Whoa! <laughs> and lastly, some yellow mustard globs. Glob, glob. So what I wanna do now is grab my hot dogs and cut them into pieces with my fingers and place them around abstractly because I like their nice circular shape. And now the pickles because they're also circular, which I really like. All right, we gotta keep moving. So I'm gonna crush up some potato chips and scatter them around in little blobs. Grab a bun, split it in half. Mm, let's do more halves. Place it around, more color, more texture. I love it. All right, we're getting out of time here. 
So let's finish it up with some coleslaw blobs. Blob, blob, yes, <laughs> abstract art, and that's time. Now that we're done, I am loving this. I call this piece Summertime Picnic in Studio. I just love the way the coleslaw complements the mustard. It's just genius. There's a lot of textures, there's a lot of colors, there's a lot of textures and colors on my own hands. I love that I was able to achieve this because I was moving so quickly at the, the speed, speed of one. one that I was able to truly listen to my mind and get in the zone and lean into the power of abstraction. So now I'm hungry, it is time for lunch. You did it, way to go. You just completed three creative exercises so fast, all at the speed of one. Thank you so much for following along today. I cannot wait to see what you made. Make sure to share your abstract art pieces on social media and tag Skillshare because we wanna see it. Thank you so much. And I hope you leave today feeling so inspired and ready to make great work. Goodbye.